Another key skill that you'll need for SAT reading success is one that I've been demonstrating throughout the videos, throughout the practice passage videos, but haven't explicitly talked about yet. And what this skill is, is what's called POE. This stands for process of elimination. Many times when I'm working with students on the SAT, I'll take a look at their homework, their reading homework that they've done for the day. And what I'll usually see is a bunch of sections, a bunch of questions where just the answer is circled. There's no other work in the question. All there is is the circled answer. There's no cross outs. There's no underlines. There's no marks, nothing indicating the thought process. And why this is a problem is twofold. Number one, pedagogically, just in terms of how I'm trying to teach, if I don't see any traces as to how a student got the answer, it's hard to figure out what went wrong. I mean, imagine if in a math section, you didn't have any of your work, you just had your answers. It'd be really hard to find out if you make mistakes, where the mistakes are coming from. But I think more problematic is if you're not doing the process of elimination properly, if you're not crossing things out, underlining things, marking up the question, you're not fully attacking the question in the most efficient manner to squeeze out as many points as you can get and to be more accurate and efficient with the way you tackle the questions. So what do I mean by this? Well, process of elimination is essentially crossing out the wrong answers, but it's more of a general approach to the questions that's reflected in the crossing out of the answers. So when you're going through your choices, you don't want to just focus on verifying correct answers. You don't want to look at A, B, C, and D and say, okay, A, why can A be right? Or B, why can B be right? Why can C be right? Why can D be right? Because you might find some reasons, on some level at least, for multiple choices working, right? And this gets us into our trap choices, which we've discussed. You might see a choice that's actually a trap choice, look at the trap aspect of it and say, oh, well, you know, this question could be true, so therefore maybe I'm going to put A. But notice that's falling into the trap. That is trying to justify a choice rather than what you should also be doing, which is look for reasons to eliminate wrong answers, not just look for reasons to pick a good answer, but to get rid of the bad ones. It's a, sh a fundamental shift in the approach to the question. So when we're evaluating these choices, we're not just wondering, okay, how does it fit with the passage? But what parts of this choice do not fit with the passage, right? And this gets us into ways to avoid and well, identify and avoid trap answers and narrow down to the right answer. So of course, if you look at, say, a choice like A and it doesn't seem to fit with the passage at all, you would just go ahead and cross out A in the answer. And what you want to see eventually is you cross out the three answers and you pick the choice that ended up, you know, left. We'll talk more about that in a second. So in any event, cross out A. Other things you can do in terms of mark up the question, let's say you're looking at D and you think D might work. It looks like it seems like it could fit because, you know, the passage did seem to talk about something like sons of educated men. So you can underline that part of the choice if it seems to fit. But then you can ask yourself again, what parts of this may not fit with the passage? What would make this wrong? And you might look at this and say, hmm, you know what? They didn't really talk about the legacy of the past and present sons of educated men. So what you can do is just kind of put an X or a cross out in the choice and say, okay, this is probably enough for me then to get rid of choice D. So notice in this process, if I look, let's say C, you eliminated, and let's say in B, you liked the fact that it mentioned the procession of the sons of educated men, so you think B fits with the passage. Notice if you show me this for your homework, it's much clearer about it's much clearer what your thought process was. First, I can see that you evaluated all four choices. Second, I can see that when you evaluated the choices, you picked out specific words, let's say in D, that you didn't think fit. And in B, you picked out specific words that you did think fit. So not only does it help me figure out your thought process, but it really helps you work through the thought process rather than, you know, what most students do in this situation, look at the question, they'll read each of the choices, they'll say, oh, I think it's like, I think it's D, but... Then they kind of forget, well, maybe B kind of worked. You want to have a process that helps you with this. Another thing you can do is let's say you're reading the choices and you say A looks pretty good, but you're uncertain. You don't have, to, you don't know whether you should cross it out or leave it or pick it. There's an in-between. Just put a little squiggly next to it and say, you know what? A looks all right. Let me look at the rest of the choices. Let me look at A after I found out what's left. Because if you can get rid of B, C, and D immediately, you know A is the answer, right? Or at least 
much more likely it's the answer. If though you get rid of B, you get rid of C, and you think D might work, well now you gotta choose between these two choices. And in most cases, you should be able to eliminate two choices rather easily. So really in most cases, the worst case scenario for you is gonna be a 50-50 guess on most questions. Now of course, we're gonna try to get to a choice on all questions, but most of the time you should be able to get down to a 50-50. And we'll talk more about how to evaluate getting stuck between two choices in a second. So the whole point of POE, process of elimination, is a way for you to evaluate the choices in a rational way so that you're not jumping to conclusions, you're not picking the first choice that you see, and you are effectively giving each choice the best shot it can get. A couple of notes. One, as I've already hinted at, let's say you get rid of A, B, and C. A big mistake I see students do in this case is, oh, I got rid of A, B, and C, must be D and they'll barely read it or maybe not even read D at all. And that's a mistake because maybe if you had read D, maybe you would have noticed, well, wait a minute, you know what? D doesn't really work either. I've eliminated all four choices. I've made a mistake somewhere. So I have to go back and reevaluate. So don't just pick uh, the first choice that you see. And finally, again, if you have any doubt at all, feel free to put a squiggly next to it, leave it, evaluate it later, right? Get an overview of what the four choices look like when you read all four choices, which is something you must always do and evaluate all four choices, you might see, you know, I get rid of A, get rid of B, C looks a little weak, I can get rid of D pretty easily, so I'm pretty happy going with C in that case. Or you might see that D fits very, very well, in which case you get rid of C and go with D. So you really want to make this a rational process and actually put down your traces of thoughts in this particular question so that you can see not only how you've picked the right answer, but eliminated the wrong ones.